Welcome back, Spartans. I know many of you have been wondering what happened to the catalog videos, and the simple truth is that catalog isn't posting. Can't really make videos without content, right? So with catalog on indefinite hiatus, Bravo has roped in 343's new technical writer, Jeff Easterling, aka Grim Brother One, to keep the rabid hordes of lore buffs at bay. While not catalog, these will be considered part of the same series, and while following a similar format, I won't be doing any voice alterations. If you liked those, sorry. If you didn't, it's your lucky day. So without further delay, let's drop some knowledge. And yes, I know exactly how that sounded. What happened to the Huragok from First Strike and Virgil from Halo 3 ODST? Quick to adjust, Virgil was interrogated by Oni for information related to what is now referred to as the Accession at Voi, but were unable to acquire any actionable intelligence before the High Prophet of Truth arrived with the Forerunner Keyship. The Huragok recovered aboard the Gettysburg met a variety of fates in the waning days of the war. The survivors were put to work on the Infinity Project and at high priority Forerunner research sites such as Trevelyan. Now it's about time we were able to put these to rest. Ever since Halo Glasslands released, people have been wondering about the fate of numerous Huragok captured by Oni at the end of the Human Covenant War. These were the many captured by John 117 and other survivors from Installation 04 and Reach at the end of Halo First Strike, and of course Virgil, or Quick to Adjust, from Halo 3 ODST. When Glasslands released, it was almost like these Huragok had been retconned out of existence. Now, we finally have a better idea of their fate. It is kind of sad to think that Quick to Adjust wasn't able to help the UNSC, but it's kind of expected when we listen to the dialogue from Halo 3. Why do the Jackals in Halo 4 look reptilian rather than avian like in previous installments? All of the species found in the Halo universe, even humans, show a degree of phenotypic variation and a variety of visually distinctive populations. The visual differences of the species like the Ongoi, Kigyar, Sankhili, or Jerolhanai that you see throughout the various Halo games showcase that variety, provide a large canvas for our amazing artists to work on, and help differentiate their roles within the Halo sandbox. Though they look more saurian than their cousins, the Aviation Jackals, Halo 4, exist contraminiously with Root Jackals, Classic, and Tavawan Skirmishers, Halo Reach, as related subspecies. You will see both the Rootin and Aviation Jackals in Halo The Master Chief Collection. This was a bit of a disappointing question, since it was answered in the Halo 4 Essential Visual Guide and in the catalog posts. What were the unknown UNSC ships in Midnight? The vessels seen in Midnight are the Poseidon Class Light Carrier, Vindication class battleship, and striding class frigate. This question too had been answered before in a Halo Waypoint knowledge drop and in greater detail. How was High Charity able to get to the Ark in a timely manner? The only way it could have been done was the portal at Voy, but High Charity was much bigger than the portal. So how was it able to do this? If it went through Voy, why did the Gravemind not throw down billions upon billions of flood forms on Earth while it was there? The flood-infected High Charity never entered Earth's atmosphere and did not transit the portal at Voy. However, the Gravemind did become aware of Earth's portal, and thus the danger that the Lesser Ark still posed to his plans, as soon as he arrived in the Soul System. His modifications to High Charity were far-reaching, both to keep the facility functioning after the departure of the Keyship, and to better serve as a mobile plague ship from which he could sing victory everlasting in a galaxy consumed of thinking life. But even with an intellect impossibly vast and deep able to twist the technologies of the Covenant far beyond their original functionality by application of esoteric precursor science, the ancient abomination was unable to conduct a desperate bridging maneuver to the Ark and maintain the structural integrity of High Charity after its arrival. This one is interesting and a bit disappointing. So we know now beyond a shadow of a doubt that High Charity did not take the portal at Void to get to the Ark. It is also confirmed that the Gravemind made major modifications to High Charity to keep it intact and powered. Why is this important, you ask? Well, as we learned in Halo 2, the Dreadnought at the center of High Charity was its main power source. So it sort of begs the question as to how High Charity was still powered in Halo 3. Now yes, we had those four generators that the Chief destroyed, but would they really have been able to power a slipspace jump? It seems the Precursor Secrets were able to keep the Covenant Holy City afloat, so to speak. Still, we don't know exactly how High Charity got to the Ark, nor why it didn't rain down flood infection pods in the Soul System. Perhaps another time. Are Short Sword, Vulture, Long Sword, Saber, and Falcon aircraft still in service as of 2557, excluding Spirit of Fire? The Long Sword and Falcon remain in active UNSC service with the Navy/Air Force and Army, respectively. 
Without the exigencies of the Covenant War requiring every combat-worthy airframe to be pressed into service, the remaining short sword inventory was either transferred to UNSC Air Force reserve units or scrapped depending on their condition. The Sabre was an experimental aerospace fighter that never saw mass production, though it remains in service at ONI facilities in the Sol system and elsewhere unofficially. Its enduring legacy can be seen in the upgrade packages fitted to the contemporary broadsword strike fighters and longsword interceptors. The Vulture had largely disappeared from UNSC inventories due to irreplaceable combat losses by 2545, but Materials Group is currently evaluating the possibility of restarting production, albeit with the benefit of improved materials and incorporation of new technologies. Note that even with the time frame of the Covenant War, some vehicles saw less prevalent use than others depending on the particularities of the battle space, logistic realities, and availability of qualified operating personnel. Ten years ago, we were faced with a Covenant Armada who just found Earth. On November 11th, we get to revisit that siege and course of events in Halo 2. To my knowledge, Halo Fiction has never stated how the Covenant found Earth, even though it was by accident. Will we ever get an explanation in fiction, or could we get that answer now? Two elements of the Covenant learned of Earth's location separately. One was the High Prophet of Truth, who was amassing a sizable invasion force at unyielding Hierophant. The other was the High Prophet of Regret, leading his personal relic hunting fleet from aboard the Solemn Penance. We will soon be answering how one of these elements learned the location of Earth. This is exciting. While Grimm never says which Prophet's discovery of Earth will come to light, I think it's safe to say we'll finally discover how Regret found Earth. The common fan canon has to do with a Forerunner relic that was brought to Earth in the I Love Bees ARG story, but the connection was never directly stated. Direct confirmation of this or another method is certainly exciting. On a side note, if Regret's discovery of Earth is explored, might we finally find out how Installation 05's location was discerned? Let us pray to the mantle that it might be so. What exactly is Mjolnir Gen 2's power system? We have clear answers for that question from Mark 4 through Mark 6, and some plausible data about the last Gen 1 project, Mark 7, but Gen 2 is just kind of... there. Specifically, what kind? Fusion, plasma fusion hybrid, something forerunner, and where are the power supplies located? The chess pieces sometimes seemed vague on this. They appear to have a dual reactor set on the back, but some sets, Venator in particular, seem a bit impossible that this is the case with how tiny the packs are. All Mjolnir Gen 2 suits use a compact fusion reactor installed on the back of their torso carapace. Note that the illustrations in the Halo 4 The Essential Visual Guide are simplified for purposes of clear presentation and should not be considered prescriptive. Does the Shark Hui still exist in the Halo universe, or is its mention in the conversations of the universe now considered nothing more than a leftover from earlier plans? If it is still canon, what is its role and can you give us details on the creature's behavior and or origins? They still exist, though we cannot yet disclose specifics. This was probably the answer that made my jaw drop in excitement. The Shark Hui were a Covenant species that was originally meant to appear in Halo CE and later in Halo 2. They are even mentioned in Conversations from the Universe, a booklet included with Halo 2's limited edition. However, as anyone who's played Halo 2 knows, they never made it into the games, and their canon status has been in a state of limbo ever since. It's exciting to think that these creatures might finally enter the Halo story in some way. Hell, based on Grimm's non-answer, we can infer that these creatures might make an appearance in some form of Halo media very soon. What is the deal with Ralph 303's unusually high service number? This anomalous service number was adjusted to Ralph 103 in our records. A little backstory here. Ralph 303, now 103, entered the Halo canon in the Halo Legends episode, Homecoming. Ever since, his high number has been a point of contention among fans. Initially, Frank O'Connor stated that his high number had to do with Ralph being discharged from the Spartan 2 program, and that details would eventually come to light. They further teased at this in one of the short stories that was included in the 2010 and 2011 editions of Halo The Fall of Reach. However, it seems that 343 has simply retconned the number to 103, which, in my opinion, is the better path to take. How did the Ordidact survive the Halo Array firing? The Ordidact's cryptum served as both a prison and a sanctuary, locking him in a deep meditative state referred to as Zenkata, while protecting him in a slipspace bubble and stasis containment as the Halo rings fired. Like a ship at sea oblivious to the tsunami passing beneath it, the Ordidact was undisturbed as Halo erased all sentient life from the galaxy. So, there we go. It's nice to get a new knowledge drop like this, especially with catalogs seemingly out of commission. We can only hope that our dear Forerunner friend can finally make an appearance in the forum. Other duties have taken Silo on Fire priority, but spare cycles were allocated to assist subsystem Grim on Site Bravo with recent queries. 
bad vibes, is expected part of juridical duties, and solving off on a tidae torso. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe share it around on whatever social media you choose. Your support is greatly appreciated. I cannot stress that enough. Thanks for watching.